Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For today's tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to make this granny square fanny pack. It is really cute and it goes with a lot of different things. Of course, you could do whatever color you want and I will, as always, have the written pattern available on my Patreon, including how to make different colorways. So as you can see, I've also made it in this really cool flower pattern. So the link for that for, will be in my description box. Anyway, let's go ahead and get into the tutorial. So to get started with this tutorial, I'm taking the paint box yarn. This is the Cotton DK yarn. It's in a weight three and it's the color vanilla cream. I will also be using a four millimeter crochet hook. So for this project, it's worked in granny squares. So I have already made up three granny squares i'm going to walk you through how to make my version here um, i will quickly just say that i chose to do one solid color i personally like the plain kind of beige look for this bag but you could totally do different colors so i will have the full written pattern available on my patreon the link will be in my description box as always thank you guys so much for supporting my art and on the pattern i will have um, options to switch colors and the exact written pattern so go ahead and check that out if you would like otherwise I'm going to walk you through how to do one color I'm going to begin with a slip knot so I'm going to begin with a single crochet chain of five and then I am going to place a slip knot in that very first chain of the row So now I'm going to chain three. That will count as your first double crochet. So I'm gonna go back through the chain, wrapping the yarn around my hook, placing it through that entire loop, and I'm gonna do an additional 15 double crochets. So that's one, two, and then I'm gonna just make my way around placing 15 double crochets through that chain. So including that chain three at the very beginning, you'll have a total of 16. So including that base chain, once you have a total of 16 on that very last double crochet, I'm just gonna place my hook through that top of the very first chain three, and I'm gonna place one slip stitch. Then I'm just gonna chain two to bring up the work and through that very same chain, I'm gonna be doing a puff stitch. So I'm just gonna wrap the yarn around the hook, place it through that same stitch, yarn over, pull through, and I'm gonna kind of like pull it up as far as my chain goes. Then I'm gonna yarn over once more, place it back through that chain, yarn over, pull through. Then I'm gonna do that one more time. Yarn over, pull through you will have a total of seven loops on your hook. You're gonna yarn over, pull through all seven, and then chain one to secure the puff stitch. You're gonna do that for every single chain going back around the row. So I will just go ahead and skip forward and come back once I've finished with this round. So once I've made my way back to the beginning, I just want to make sure that you are counting how many pop stitches you do. You should have a total of 16. So please do not forget that last chain of the round. Okay, so now that I have a total of 16 puff stitches, I've made my way back to the beginning of the round. I'm just gonna place my hook through the top of that chain three and place one slip stitch to join the row together. So now I'm going to chain two. I'm going to be doing a double crochet puff stitch. So for this, I am also going to begin by wrapping the yarn around my hook going through that entire chain one space yarn over pull through 
then I'm going to yarn over, pull through two. So I will have two loops left on my hook. Then I'm going to repeat that process of yarning over, going through that chain one space, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. So basically you're completing half of a double crochet. Um, and then we're just going to do that a total of three times. So I'm going to yarn over, go through that chain one space, yarn over, pull through, pull through two. So you will have a total of four loops on your hook. Then I'm just going to yarn over, pull through all four, and then chain two. So then you're just going to move over to the next chain one space and do that same um, double crochet puff stitch. So you're going to repeat that process all the way around the round. So I will be back once I have completed this round. So now I've made my way back to the beginning of the round. You should have a total of 16 double crochet puff stitches. And to finish off that last stitch, I'm just going to chain two, go over to the top of that chain two at the very beginning, place a slip stitch. So now to begin the next round, I'm just going to chain four, that will count as your first treble crochet. And then going through that entire space that I just chained off of, I'm going to be placing two treble crochets. Then in that next chain two space, I'm going to be placing three double crochets. And then in the next chain two space, I'm going to place three half double crochets. And then in the next space, I'm going to place three double crochets. And then in the next space, three treble crochets. So that is going to be one edge of the granny square and as you can see we are at the corner so now to round out the corner I'm just going to chain three and then now I am going to be working along the next side repeating this same process. So I'm going to begin with three treble crochets all in that same space that we have been working in to make the turn. Then in the next one three double crochets then three half double crochets, and then you're going to be going back up again. So three double crochets, three treble crochets, and then make the turn. So I'm just going to speed through this portion. Again, the written pattern will be available on my Patreon, and I will come back once I have made all four sides. I am at the end of this side, so all I have left to place is the treble crochets. So I'm just going to show you how to finish off the work. I'm just going to go through that last space with a total of three treble crochets. And then to connect the ends together, I'm just going to chain two and go over to the top of that last treble crochet of the row and I'm going to place a slip stitch and then from here all I'm going to do is just cut this and fasten it off and I'm going to repeat this and make a total of four and that's all you need to complete this fanny pack so now I'm going to show you how to put them all together. So now once you have completed the fourth granny square, I'm just going to continue off the working yarn and I'm going to be folding two of the squares together. So just make sure the wrong side of the work is facing outward towards you as you're crocheting these two together because the inside will be the front of the back. So I'm just going to continue my working yarn and sandwich the two together, placing my hook through both sides with a row of single crochet working my way all the way down the row 
So once these two granny squares are attached, I'm just going to cut and tie, and then I'm going to repeat the same process to attach a third one. So you have three granny squares attached in a row, um, and then all I'm going to do is attach the last one. So just take the two corner granny squares and you're going to flip them up at a diagonal. So once the corner pieces are flipped up, then you just take the last remaining granny square and make sure the wrong side is facing you and then just place it down and you're going to attach your yarn and crochet all the way around using the same method of connecting the two sides together and then crochet along the bottom and then the other side. So I'm just going to quickly attach the last piece and then that is how you attach the main portion of the bag and then I will be back to show you how I do the edging and the strap. So now I have finished attaching all of the granny squares together. I'm going to flip it um, right side out so that all of the seam lines are along the inside and then I'm going to work on the edging. So I'm just going to fold it in half um, and I'm going to go to the very corner chain and I'm going to reattach my yarn and then I'm going to begin just doing a row of half double crochet along the border and I'm going to make my way all the way around. So now that I've made my way all the way around, I am just going to go through that center chain with a slip stitch. And then I'm going to chain two to bring up the work. I'm gonna flip it over and then I'm going to begin working on just one half. I'm gonna go back along just one half, placing one half double crochet per chain and I'm gonna stop once I reach the other corner. So now I've made my way to the end of the first side. I'm not going to continue in a round. I am going to chain a total of two to bring up the work, flip it over, and then again just placing a row of half double crochet until I reach the opposite side. So now I have made my way back to the other side. That is going to be one half of the flap that you attach the zipper onto. Um, we're just going to repeat on the opposite side. You can cut and tie, but I hate weaving in loose ends, so I'm just going to slip stitch my way down the side to avoid having to weave in an extra string. Um, anyway, once I reach my way down to the other side, I'm just going to repeat that same process of doing two rows of half double crochet, and then I'll be back to show you what's next. So now I have made my way to the end of the row um, and as you can see you will have a little opening between the two sides which is perfectly fine because next what I'm going to be doing is sewing a zipper in between the middle. Um, so I am just going to cut and tie but actually before I sew any zipper or lining I'm going to get started on the strap. So all you're going to do is just take your yarn, make a slip knot, and then you're going to chain a total of five. So then once you have a five, I'm just going to chain one more to make the turn and I'm going to go back along the row and I'm going to do this in um, half double crochet. So I'm going to be wrapping the yarn around the hook, going through that first chain of the row, going back yarn over pull through and then yarn over pull through three so i'm going to be placing one half double crochet in every chain until i reach the end of the row now i'm at the end of the row i'm just going to chain one to bring up the work flip it over and then i'm just going to be continuing placing rows of half double crochet um, for as long as you would like to make the strap so so to continue on that very first chain that's connected to the chain one the chain one is going to count as our first half double crochet for that chain i'm just going to go through that second chain of the row with my very first half double crochet and then just continue placing one half double crochet per chain and then please don't forget to include that very last chain of the row so that your strap stays even 
So then just chain one, flip over the work. Again, we're skipping that very first chain that's connected to the chain one and going into the chain after with our first half double crochet, placing one half double crochet per chain. So you can make this strap as long as you need it to be. Um, I am just going to make mine long enough to fit comfortably around my back. I am going to be wearing this fanny pack across the chest versus on my waist, but you could feel free to measure it to wherever you would like to wear this bag. So yeah, I'm just going to continue making this strap and I will be back to show you how I attach it all together as well as how to sew the zipper and any lining. So now I have finished the bag and the strap. So um, there's a couple ways that you can do this in terms of the order. I have a zipper that I picked out for this bag. I just went to the craft store. They have zippers in um, several different sizes. Um, I just picked up a nine, a nine inch zipper, but um, if you do have a zipper that's slightly longer, that would work too. You can just um, tuck in the extra, cut off the end, and then make sure you sew it really well. But I just, to make things easier, got a zipper that was pretty much the same length of my bag. So there are several options when you're piecing your bag together. You can um, sew in a lining. So I do have some leftover fabric. Um, that I could use for a lining. You could also just leave it um, without any lining. It'll just be a little bit holy, so um, it might just be good to hold your phone or a wallet, but nothing loose that could fall through. Um, but a lining is a great option to make the bag a little bit more sturdy. So um, if you do decide to sew a lining, this is how I would do it because I am not a professional i'm kind of lazy about um creating these projects so i would honestly just line it up and i would just cut around it leaving probably like half an inch of space from the outside of the bag and the lining and i would leave all of this at the top so that when i sew it on the inside let me just show you real quick these scissors are so dull oh my god so as you can see, I cut out the lining to just be a tiny bit longer than the actual bag. So then all I would do, you can do this if you have a machine, that's great. You could also sew this by hand. If you want to do it like super quick, there's also fabric glue that you could use to stick this together. So then all I would do is just first sew all the way around the side and just sew up a little bit so that it will fit the size of the bag. And then I would just flip it inside out so that the seam will be resting along the seams in the inside of the bag. Um, and then all I would do is just fold down the inside like this. So that again, the excess fabric will be sewn into the inside of the bag. I'm probably not going to sew a lining so that's why i'm just quickly walking through this in case you wanted to um so yes yeah, so and then i would fold that down along the inside and then when you sew it you will have a nice edge along the side and a nice lining to the bag and then so if you do a lining i would sew that in first you could also sew it while you sew the zipper on so um, you only have one seam line. So then all I would do if I was doing that is just take the zipper, open it up, and then I would line it in between the crochet and the lining, like you're making a little sandwich. And then I would just run my sewing machine along the edge as close to the zipper as I can get, but not too much so that it overlaps into the teeth of the zipper. But I am gonna keep it super simple and not do a lining. And I'm just gonna weave in all of the interior, um, the interior strings. And I'm just gonna do the zipper pretty much the same way. So with crochet, what I love about 
sewing zippers in bags is that you could pretty much just sew it straight away. You don't have to fold the crochet to hide the seam because it'll just make it bulky on the inside and the yarn has a nice edge to it anyway. So that's one bonus of that. So I would just line it up to be in the middle and you're going to have a little bit of extra space along the sides. Um, and that's where I would put my strap. So my strap is right here. All I would do is while I'm sewing, I'll just go around like that. And then I would sew my strap to go along the corners and then continue around with the zipper on the other side. So I, you could pin it, you can just eyeball it. I'm gonna eyeball it because that's what I do, but um, sorry if this isn't too detailed, but it's just a quick walkthrough of how I'm piecing this together. I do have a sewing machine, so I'm just gonna run this through the sewing machine. Um, and then yeah, that's pretty much it. I'll be done to show you the final product. So this is it for the tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, again, I will have the written pattern available on my Patreon. So on the pattern, I also show you how to walk through um, different colorways. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this tutorial. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments or you can message me directly on Patreon. Um, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.